welcome to my channel. My name is Morgan. I am a licensed cosmetologist and a professional makeup artist and a lover of all things theatrical. So as a makeup artist, I get asked all the time, what is the difference between airbrush makeup and traditional makeup? And I'm a visual person, so I figured, why not just show you? So today we're gonna go through both applications, the airbrush application of makeup versus the traditional makeup application what the differences are between the two. Why is airbrush makeup more expensive than traditional makeup? All right, so to go ahead and get us started, we are going to prime our face. I have the Scandinavia Spray Primer, so that's what we're gonna use today. So every makeup artist is gonna have their own way of doing things, but for me, when I'm doing airbrush, I like to do everything first. So foundation comes last. So we're gonna start off by doing our contour and our highlight, and then we're gonna do the airbrush. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my Fenty stick, and I'm going to lay that in the places that I would normally contour, and then we're gonna buff that out. Also, I think it's important to note that you can go a little bit heavier with your concealer and your highlight because it is going to get covered over essentially with the airbrush. So you can be a little bit heavier handed with this than you would be with your normal contour application. I'm just gonna buff that out. Don't want any harsh lines. One thing that's important to remember with airbrush versus traditional makeup, it's really important that you go ahead and make everything as smooth and nice as you can when you first initially go in because you're not really gonna have a chance to fix it after you go in with your airbrush. All right, so now that I'm happy with my contour, I like to keep it pretty natural, but like I said, you can definitely go a little bit heavier with this part since you're gonna go over top with it anyway with your airbrush foundation. But now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight. So I like to highlight underneath my eyes, a little bit on my nose, a little bit on my chin, and a little bit on my forehead. But it is a preference thing, so whatever you guys wanna do, want a highlight, you just go for it. So I'm gonna use Born This Way concealer. I really like this color. This is mahogany. This is very close to my skin tone, but just a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this color down first, and then I'll put an even lighter color just strategically in the areas that I want it to be a little bit lighter. So we're gonna start there, and I'm just gonna take a domed foundation brush and we're going to kind of blend that out and work that into the skin. You can also use a beauty blender if you like, but my beauty blender is being cleaned right now, so I'm just using this. So again, you really wanna make sure that there are no harsh lines. So blending that highlight into the contour is really gonna be essential. Guys, you really have to make sure that everything is really smoothed out and blended before you go in with your airbrush. Okay, I'm happy with how that looks. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the lighter concealer. This one is still born this way, but this is in color Latte. And I'm just going to strategically place this in the areas that I want to be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna go right in the corner, just dot right there, dot right there, and right on the outside, just dot in those little places, and a little bit down my nose. Just a tiny bit on my forehead, and a little bit above my Cupid's bow. So now same thing, I'm just gonna go in and kind of buff that out. Gently tapping it into the skin. That's it. It's already a little bit lighter. Okay, so now that I'm happy with how everything looks so far, I'm gonna go ahead in with my Tem2 foundation. This is the airbrush foundation that we're gonna be using today. We are also going to be using the Tem2 wireless airbrush foundation system. So taking shade number eight, clay, we're just gonna go ahead and put a couple of drops into our airbrush machine. Remember, this is a highly concentrated foundation, so you really don't need that much to get started. 
All right, so to turn it on, you're just gonna press this power button on, and then there are dots on the back. I don't want the air to come out this strong, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tap this, and it brings it down to one. So it's going to give me more control as to where the airbrush goes. It's tricky because you can't actually see where the airbrush is going, so you definitely wanna make sure you shield the hair or shield the client's clothes so that it doesn't get on it. And we're just gonna go in this circular motion all around the face. You can already start to see where it's put it down. And you wanna stay about six to 10 inches away from your face because the closer you get, the stronger the stream and you're not gonna get as much coverage. So it's gonna end up looking really blotchy. So that was layer number one. I'm gonna go ahead in and add a couple more drops of the same foundation and add a second layer because I want a little bit more coverage. Airbrush foundation is a little bit different than traditional foundation in the sense that you can only determine your coverage based on how many layers you add. Whereas with traditional foundation, you can choose if you want a sheer foundation or a dewy foundation or a matte foundation. With airbrush, you really can only change the finish based on the products you put on top of it and how many layers of foundation you add. I'm really happy with that layer of foundation. I think two layers is good for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine back on and we're gonna turn it on full blast. And now I'm just going to use this air to kind of dry my face. There's nothing coming out. That just gives everything a chance to set. Now normally, when I'm doing a traditional makeup application, I start with the eyes, so that if anything falls out underneath, it's super easy for me to clean. But with airbrush, you really don't want to get any of that foundation on top of your eye look. So at least for me personally, I go ahead and just do the airbrush first, and then we focus on eyes. So because of that, you're really gonna wanna make sure that you set underneath your eyes really well, so that if you have any fallout from your shadow, you can easily just kind of wipe it away. So I'm gonna go in with my setting powder and I'm going to lay that right underneath my eyes. And then we're just gonna take a small amount and put it mainly in our T-zone area. Since I'm mainly focusing on the foundation in this video, I'm going to do a very, very simple eye look. I'm just gonna take my Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Powder Foundation and I'm going to wash a small amount across my eye. Next up, I'm gonna do my brows, actually. So I got this product in Italy, and I love it because it has a nice warm brown undertone. Most eyebrow gel products that I find have more of like a, a gray undertone, so I really love to use this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this on, and then we will do some liner. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, please go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and whisk away the powder that's underneath my eye. And we're gonna throw on a very simple lip. I'm gonna go on in with Crucifix. This is a really old lip gloss that I have, but I really love it. It is from Iman, and the color is Muse. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that on. Okay guys, that is my completed airbrush foundation look. I really didn't want to add a whole lot else to the skin, so I didn't do blush or highlight or anything like that because I wanted you guys to really see the skin. So I'm gonna turn for you so that you can really check out how airbrush foundation looks. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into traditional makeup. 
So because I really like my foundation to look pretty natural, I'm still gonna go ahead and put my concealer underneath. So let's go ahead and do that now. So taking that same Fenty stick, I'm gonna go ahead and place that in the places that I want to contour. I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that all out. So now I'm gonna go ahead in with my foundation. Today I'm gonna use Fenty. So this foundation is very matte and it's also pretty full coverage. So I'm gonna show you the difference between the light application of the airbrush versus the heavier coverage of the Fenty foundation. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that all out. Okay, so now since we've laid down our foundation already, you can see exactly where you need to put the concealer. So I'm gonna go in with mahogany again, and I'm gonna place it in the areas that I feel like I need a little bit more coverage. So we're just gonna go right underneath the eye, on my cupid's bow, right on my chin, and I'm actually gonna go around my chin a little bit because I feel like I need a little bit more coverage in those areas, and right on my forehead. All right, now we're gonna blend all that out. So I feel like I wanna lighten up just a little bit, so I'm gonna take Latte again and I'm gonna go underneath my eye, just a little bit. Right here, right here. Go over the nose a little bit, keep it bow, and I think we'll leave it there. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that out as well. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the eyes and just do the same thing, just keep it very simple. I'm gonna wash that same color of Fenty Beauty's Pro Filter Powder and we're just gonna lay that right over top of our lid. I forgot to set underneath my eyes, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that taking that same Cover FX powder and we're gonna lay that right underneath our eye. All right, let's go ahead and throw on our wing and our mascara. Okay, let's throw on our lips, same colors as before. All right guys, and this is the final look of the traditional makeup. I think both airbrush makeup and traditional makeup are both beautiful. It just depends on what you're looking for. Do you want that kind of flawless, non-brush look? Then you're gonna wanna go with airbrush. Do you want a heavier foundation? Do you want a more sheer foundation? Do you want a more dewy finish? If those are your preferences, then you're probably gonna wanna go with a traditional makeup application. There are a few reasons that airbrush makeup is a little bit more expensive than traditional makeup. Number one, the applicator itself is very expensive. The, the air compress machine ranges anywhere from $100 to about $500 for the machine itself. Then, the airbrush foundation is also very expensive. The little vials that you get are like $20 to $30 for half an ounce versus regular foundation bottle that has more foundation and costs less money when you break it down. So the cost of the products are a little bit higher, but also the effort that it takes to apply the airbrush foundation is a little bit more extensive and time equals money. So it's gonna cost you a little bit more typically to get airbrush foundation versus traditional foundation for those reasons. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning into my channel today. I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope if you've ever had that question, hey, what's the difference between airbrush and traditional makeup? 
that this answered those questions. And if it didn't, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. If you enjoyed this video, will you please do me a favor and give me a big thumbs up? Also, if you enjoyed this kind of content, please consider subscribing to this channel. I upload videos weekly and I'd love to see you guys next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day.